Carr, Shauna Karish here with another Ask Shauna Answer. Okay, so this one comes from Sarah, and she says, Hey, Shauna, I have a couple issues I need some advice on. One is how to get my gelding journey to stop stall weaving. I have given him a jolly ball, one of those stall suckers, and made sure he has some kind of stuff to munch on so he doesn't get bored. It doesn't seem to help. I am using 100% positive reinforcement training and clicker training with him. Uh, we have improved on stall man manners as far as crowding the door, not trying to shove past me and being polite about personal space when I clean or feed, but not the weaving. He has a target in his stall, which is not going very well. Uh, that's another issue we are having. And I want to get him happy in his stall and not get apneurotic. We are also having issues with a target training. Um, clicker training is going well, just not the target. Can you please help me some advice on how to get him to be more engaged? And my last question, um, how in the world do I stop him from trying to kick me when I clean his sheath? I prefer to not get kicked, but he needs it cleaned. Okay. Um, yes. That, and then that's a few questions in there. Okay. So I for sure have, um, uh, another ask Sean, I think it's just on stall or just on um, sheath cleaning. And I'm not sure. Yes, just on sheath cleaning. So I would look that up too, because that'll give you more specific advice on the sheath cleaning. Also, I do have a sheath cleaning video that is available. Uh, anyway, that's just, you can go to my website for that if you're interested. But there is basically the sheath cleaning is systematic desensitization and counter conditioning. So those sounds like big words, but it's really the same thing. It's teaching him to, to be desensitized to the tactile, the feeling that he gets from that. And then the other thing is your, the systematic desensitization. Then the counter conditioning is making it more reinforcing. So right now he looks at it and he says, no, I, I would rather kick you than I would to, to stand quietly for this. So what you want to do is make it where he makes a new choice because everything they do is a choice and they're going to choose a thing with the strongest reinforcement history. So what you want to do is make it more reinforcing to stand quietly as opposed to, to kicking you. So the trick is to do it in small enough steps that they can, he can process it. So don't go straight to his sheath Think, okay, where, how close can I get where you're still pretty relaxed? So not, not where we tolerate it, but where are you actually pretty relaxed? So maybe it is, it's on his barrel. So what I do is touch, click, feed, touch, click, feed, touch further, click, feed, touch further, click, feed until around you can touch under his belly. You can touch, you know, the back of his legs and working on each of those pieces and building up the positive reinforcement history with each of those pieces. So you want to go slow. Don't rush it. Don't try to make it all in one day. The best thing you can do is do a little bit and, and let it be there. So like, keep in mind that with the sheath cleaning or something, whichever he doesn't like, whether it's sheath cleaning or hoof picking or, or, you know, coming in his stall, whatever it might be, it, it's more reinforcing and doesn't like it, you know, so he's going to choose to do what he can to avoid that situation. So with uh, doing, th so there's some adversive quality to it. You know, he doesn't like the sheath cleaning. For some reason, he feels protective and doesn't feel that that's a good thing to do. So you, what you want to do, if you keep doing it, doing it, doing it, doing it, doing it, it's like a right already. So a lot of times what I like to do is say, that was really good. That was a good standing still for that moment. I'm going to reinforce you a lot and we're not going to do it anymore. So don't keep drilling it. Let it just say your good attitude was great and we're going to leave it there for today. So that's where I say that thing where slow down, you'll go faster. That's definitely one of those areas where if you slow down, you'll go faster. So take that time with that part. So that's the sheath cleaning part. Now let's get to the target training part. <laughs> so with a target, if he doesn't like the target, and I'm going to tell you this, a lot of people don't know this. They don't recognize it. They wouldn't know that anymore. Minty was the biggest quitter I ever worked. And if you don't know who Minty is, you can go look up clicker trained horse remembers after seven years. And that's Minty. Now you watch him and we had been gone for a long time, but look how enthusiastic and bright he is. He was the biggest quitter. He's been one of the most challenging horses I've had to work because he just walk away from target training. The horse in the paddock next to him, who I was not training, was reaching over trying to touch the target. 
you know, Minty's like, it's too much for me. So there's, there could be a couple things. Um, and, and basically it's saying it's not worth his while to even try. So it could be one, Minty was very young. He was a yearling. So he didn't have a lot of experience with learning. So he just thought it's just not worth my while. I'm not going to do it. But for a lot of horses who do have experience with learning, a lot of times what they've learned is that, uh, to not know the answer can make them insecure or finding the wrong answer may get them in trouble or earn them a correction. So there's a tendency for some horses to think, I'm not going to do anything till I'm told exactly what to do. So problem solving can be a problem. <laughs> I mean, it can be a challenge for them. So looking for anything. So a lot of times when I have them, when they're like that, even if I just have that target there and they're like, mm. and if I even see them, let's say it's over here. And if I even see them go, I take that starts with the eyes looking at it looking in that direction and I click and reinforce that click and reinforce that until they're reaching a little bit I click before they even get there so I build up from there the other thing that can also be is a lot of times horses have seen sticks and and they haven't been a great thing so if you have a horse who has been in uh has you know they've either done natural horsemanship and a lot of times they use a lot of sticks with strings on them or Sometimes with ridden work, people use sticks for, you know, helping them to go or even lunging. So a lot of times things on sticks are not, or they'll put a bag on the end of a stick. So a lot of times the sticks aren't necessarily great things. So the targeting, if you have a telescoping target, that's great. Because a telescoping target, you can make small and take the stick out of it. But a lot of horses, anything on a stick can be worrisome. So if that's the case, a lot of times what I do, if you feel safe with your horse, I will sit on the ground with a target down low and on the ground. So instead of it feeling like it's a human, it's up and they're wielding this thing, it is down on the ground and it's lower and it gives them a chance to, they get to come to the target. So do, do resist that urge to bring the target to them. Let them come to the target, even towards the target, because that will help quite a bit with building the boldness and realizing that you're not going towards them that's not going to come to them or pursue them so i hope that helps you out a little bit for that part and then what was he okay with the stall weaving so the stall weaving that's a stereotypical uh behavior so it, it's it's a coping mechanism oftentimes that he that horses have developed the cribbing's another one you know there's there's a few of them but it is um a, a, a coping mechanism that was developed at some point in time where it's kind of helped to serve them and help them cope with a situation. So one of the best things you can do, if this is possible, I would make the time in the stall as minimal as possible. So I don't know, he, a lot of horses live in a stall and that's all they can do. They, they have to live in a stall because that's just the environment. That's where you are. That's where you live. That's, you know, that's just life really. And so but if you can get as much time out of there as possible, that will help quite a bit um, so that there it's not all this stall time. But it can be that this behavior's already been developed and, and, and they can stick around for a while. So what I would try to do is make sure when, look for relaxation, look for settling. I would work them in the stall, giving them toys. Environmental enrichment is really important. I might put a mirror in there. If they have a stall, if you can put a... Um, like a stall guard and have the stall door open if they don't have a yoke where they can pop their head out that can help a lot because then they can look out and see what's going on and sometimes if other horses can see each other that can help quite a bit that's where the stall can help or the uh, mirror can help quite a bit too and they have horse mirrors so just put don't put a vanity mirror in there you got to go find one that there are horse mirrors that are they're not breakable they're they're meant to be where they're going to be roughed up a little bit so sometimes that can help but really I would really look at the management if you can really organize any way to have more time outside and then when he is inside I might make a lot of the sessions happen when he is inside so the outside time is is your time and I'm going to try to make you make sure you can be out there hopefully you can be out with friends which can help quite a bit giving them that healthy socialization and balancing out his day but the um but having the then when he comes in it's session time session time session time and even if he can't go out and be turned out all the time 
take him for as many walks as you can. You know, if you can find anything to get him out. So you take him for walks. You do other things where you guys can get out more and more and more and more. And utilizing the food-oriented um, environmental enrichment is quite engaging. So, and remember when you give it. So don't wait for him to get where he's he's weaving in his stall. And they go, oh, let me get you a ball, <laughs> you know, a hay ball. Because that will... Um, that you can actually be reinforcing that behavior. So when he's quiet and still, I'd be sure to get the hay balls. And the hay balls are nice because they're big. It's just another form of slow feeder. So hopefully you have them on a slow feeder already. If not, the porta grazers I find are great ones. They're very uh, sturdy and they actually kind of turn into a bit of a toy too. So you may already have them on a slow grazer. If not, I would get that. That's engaging mentally. The hay balls are... A little tedious to make, but they're they're pretty big, you know, like that. <laughs> and there, and you you it has a little top you can open and you can stuff it with hay, and that's really nice because it's another way that they're kind of it, it's almost like grazing, you know, because grazing is part of their natural environment. And like in New Mexico, we don't have any grazing; it just doesn't happen here. So we have to find other ways to help them kind of use their noses and search and find and push and root and and to engage in that kind of behavior. So that may help as well. I think looking for reducing stress in every way, in every shape, in every part of his world will help. I think that you're seeing um, like the targeting, not doing it. I'm suspecting it's out of worry that he's not letting you touch his sheath or near his sheath. Again, that's probably out of worry. And stall weaving, I imagine, comes out of worry. So I think the more you can get him relaxed with things like tactile all over him. So don't go right to the sheath. Try everywhere. Make sure you can touch everywhere. But the more you make it more and more reinforcing and more and more reinforcing and getting him bolder about the target, I think you're going to see that the weaving will reduce that because it is, it, it, they, they have a tendency, like my Murray, he got... Uh, he came and he, he was an off the track thoroughbred. He was frightened of the whole world. He didn't like anything in the world. He just was very afraid. So what I did is uh, set out to when I would take him and we'd see stuff, I'd point it out. We'd go on long walks and I'd have him touch things and he got better and he got more reinforcement. Then he turned into being an oral horse, not in a bad way, but he'd explore and lick things and want to play with things with his mouth. He wouldn't even do that. He didn't like horses. He couldn't, he didn't know how to play with horses. He didn't like people. He didn't like things. He didn't like new things. He didn't like, but he, he got kind of more oral. And so he'd play with things. So I gave him oral toys because that's something he liked. And, and I gave him things that he liked to chew on ropes. So I hung him ropes and there's things that you can do that can help. And it helped him to become more relaxed overall. And so you saw him overall relax. And I think that is going to help journey to get more relaxed is when he sees the world is a little bit softer, better place. So keep at it. It took two years to get Murray to be where I was like, he is really good. But it, it was a while, you know, it took two months till I felt like we even were building a relationship a little bit. So, so keep at it a little bit. And one more thing to think about with environmental enrichment is to vary it. So don't have it be um, in there. Just don't put it in, leave it in. That Then it's not enriching. It's not even novel. So you want to rotate things. So keep looking. Give him snuffle mats. Give him, you know, things. But you put them in, take them out, put them in, take them out, put them in, take them out. So they're novel and new for them. So it's not kind of like, eh, it's just a piece of furniture that's been sitting there forever. All right. That's a lot of questions in one question or a lot of answers in one question. So hopefully that helps you in each of those little areas. If you have more questions, you know how to get a hold of me. You just go to uh, the website and look up the Ask Shauna page and you submit that. You know because you already did it. But for anybody else watching, that's what you do is look up uh, via Nova Training or shaunacarish.com, either of those, and you will find the link on the Shauna Karish side that says Ask Shauna and you submit your question there and we will, I will get to it. All righty. That's it for now. All right. Bye-bye.